Um, welcome to this afternoon's uh, webinar. Um, the title for this week's um, talk is on Moodle site health check. Um, so I'll go I'll go through and explain in a little bit more detail um, what the objectives are of this session in a second. But before I do so, I just want to outline just some details about the instructions for the webinar. So I've actually muted your microphones, so that means you can't actually speak. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay. So my intention is that I will talk for about 15 or 20 minutes, just do a demonstration. And then if you have any questions, um, what you need to do is to click on the instant messaging icon which you'll see on the bottom left hand side of your screen it's where the arrow is pointing to if you click on here you can actually uh, type in a question or make a comment um, and obviously um, we can come back and I can come back to it at the end as well okay so that's the instructions for how we're going to proceed um, the aims of this session are really just one really so what I'm going to do is briefly outline what the Dell baseline is um, very briefly and then I'm going to take you into a Moodle module and show how what what really how the Dell baseline should work in a in a module what are the essential minimum requirements that needed to go into a, a Moodle module so I say as I say um, I'll try and keep this down to about 15 or 20 minutes um, also, the session is being recorded so that at a later date um, I can, um, I'll put, it, put up the recording link on Yammer as well. Um, so not only does it record the voice, but it also records the chat room conversation that um, any participants um, comments or questions as well. Okay, um, so first of all, in terms of um, LSBU has a Moodle Dell baseline document and in it, it's the, the purpose of it is to set down some minimum guidelines of what sort of content needs to go into a Moodle module. Um, and the reason that we have a Dell baseline is, well, the, probably the main reason is from the student's perspective is that really they want to see sort of some consistency between the modules. So if they go into one module and it's full of content uh, for one particular course and then they go into the next module, they see that there's a similar amount of content in there. And also they become used to understanding that they, they need to go to similar places to submit their work. Um, so they're not having to look around and find um, documents or assignment submission areas difficult in a difficult find them in a difficult place so the Dell baseline document which I'll show you later on where it is it consists of four main sections so these I've highlighted here there's the Moodle administration information so this is a sort of overall information that you'd expect maybe some guidelines on how to orientate around the module um, maybe a module guide uh, things like where to contact the lecturers or the school administrator. Um, the second major section is to do with the learning and teaching activities and resources. So these are usually done on a weekly basis. So things like the lecture slides, things like handouts, maybe accompanying videos, that sort of thing. The third main area is assessment and feedback. So again, all assignments should be submitted really via Moodle. So these should have assignment submission points. Um, so these are the places in Moodle where the lecturer sets up an assignment submission area and the students could submit their work. It's also a place where the students would expect to see their assignment briefs and um, they should also be able to get their uh, feedback where appropriate inside a Moodle. And then finally is the learner support information. So this might include things like um, frequency, frequently asked questions about the module or further information about specialist software, that sort of thing. Okay, so that's kind of an overview of the Dell baseline. 
Um, I'll show you a more detailed document which sort of elaborates on all these four points. But the next thing I want to do really in the next little section is that I'm going to open a, um, a live Moodle module and where I've set up um, a module based around the Dell baseline. So if you just bear with me just for a couple of seconds while I, um, I switch now from my PowerPoint into um, the Moodle site. So it's just loading at the moment. So you should be able to see in front of you now um, a typical Moodle module. So actually it's headed 1718 Chris Rao test course. So this is kind of my sample module. But I've set it up so that it gives you a guideline of how to set up your module um, and kind of meet the Dell baseline um, in terms of what's expected or kind of the minimum sort of standards of what needs to go into a module. So you kind of should be fairly familiar with the layout. By default, um, at the top of the page, there will be an announcements forum. So that's an area where you as the lecturer can communicate with your students. So typically speaking, you'd put out maybe weekly announcements, things to do with when assignments are due in, uh, maybe changes of rooms. It's you know a place where you can have instant dialogue with your students. The, along with that, and this you, this will probably need to be set up as well for yourself, is a meet the meet your peers or introduce yourself um, discussion room as well. Um, this is a really good idea because students will probably access this module even before you start teaching, and it's a good opportunity for them to maybe just say something about themselves. Um, it's a way of them introducing them to your, to their classmates. It's also a way of them getting used to using Moodle, you know, especially if you want them to use forums or chat rooms. To make something where they just say something about themselves will give them um, sort of more confidence in terms of uh, being able to go into Moodle and use, use this particular tool. So those are two things that I've, uh, are... are uh, recommended really to put at the top of the page then just to give you an, again a, a sort of um, a holistic view of the whole module how I've organized this I've got three sections at the top module overview assessment and feedback resources and learning support and then below that I've got the weekly contents of this particular semester so that's how I, I've, I've, I've organized it um, and this is this is exactly the view the students are going to see. So the first section, module overview, if I click on there, it will take you into this section. And what I've done in here is I've just labeled it at the top, the type of information that the students or the baseline suggests that you put into this section. So first of all, the first guide is called a Moodle module orientation. So this is particular this this version is done in a PowerPoint and it gives the student a guide of what's expected of them in terms of studying this particular module. So in there you would maybe include information about what type of activities they're expected to contribute to, uh, maybe f some guidance about assessments, maybe how many hours a week they're expected to actually be uh, studying in this particular module, maybe online or in a face-to-face -face context. So some general guidelines and also where they're, where, which, you know, which sections they need to go to in terms of getting the essential information for this course. Along with that, you would need a module guide. Now again, for most courses or most modules that have already been written, this, this document has to have been written for validation. So, um, and it's probably already done and in certain cases you will give us a paper guide to your students on the particular module. So really it's just a question of making sure that's uploaded to this particular section. The third area or the third sort of link is the contact details. So let me just open that for a second. And 
again this is clearly set out so you've got the module leader a uh, mr friend uh, flintstone and along with that their email their uh, telephone number and something about their office hours and how the students need to contact that particular person so in this case they need to make an appointment but you know you could put say you're open or for a drop-in session or for one hour a week or whatever whatever it is along with that we've got other lecture or seminar leaders and probably just as importantly as well is where the students can contact their course administrator so that's going to vary from one school to another but again it's a very useful information for the student okay so let me go back and then the final section is uh, or the final link rather is the module uh, evaluation questionnaire so again for all um, all, all modules you need to include a module evaluation questionnaire um, in, in into your course where the students can click on the link and then towards the end of the semester they can uh, fill in their views about the course right so that's the first section um, that's looking at the course overview if I go back the second section, and again, really recommend that you put this at the top of the page, is assessment and feedback. Um, so if I click into there, I'll give you an example of how this section can be laid out. Um, so what we've got here are, again, a, a brief overview of what's in this section. As you can see, there's an assignment brief for each, all three of the assignments, and in this particular case, there are three submission points one two and three that go with each assignment and in addition to that there's an assignment marking criteria as well so make sure obviously the two things are linked so assignment and they're clearly labeled so assignment one brief um, really needs to go next to the submission point which is the assignment um, I've called it submit assignment one here and similarly for assignment two and assignment three clearly labeled and also you might you know once you go into it the, the dates will be available as well um, I've put a slightly different version there as well um, if you want to put some actual details with it and then along with that along with the assignments um, again it's really good to actually give a student some some guidelines on what they need to expect if they're actually doing an exam or they have further assessment so again we've got another document here and that's the type of information that we recommend not you don't just put up just before the test or just before the exam but put up at the start of the course so that students can easily access it along with the submission areas as well so again it's a good idea to have those set up um, as soon as the, the course becomes the, the module becomes available to the students the third area is the resources and learning support so let me click on there and I'll go into it and again this is a, a very simple way to set this area up so um, the first one has got a module frequently asked questions so again this is, can be a discussion area for the students so the students click on there they can ask you a question and this is specific to the actual module that they're studying um, and then you can recycle those questions you know especially if you're getting the same types of questions coming up as well um, along with that you would need a module study guide some more details about how or what's expected in this particular module um, and again along with that we recommend that you actually provide the students with some sample or exemplar essays or past assignments so again gives the student some sort of clear idea of what sort of expected from them um, so I've uploaded again an assignment here but also you might if it's an exam based course you might actually want to provide some sample exam questions and maybe some sample exam answers as well um, for the students so again they can see re even right at the start of the course what they're aiming for in terms of um, where they were going to end up at the end of, of the semester 
Okay, so those are the three sort of sections that give us sort of the essential background information for the students. In terms of the weekly content, so I've just labelled it week one, week two, week week three, week four. Um, again, along with that, it, 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 you might actually want to add the topics to the week as well. So you might be week one, introduction to business, week two, um, whatever the topic is for that particular week. But I've just kept it simple here. Again, if I click on week one, actually go into week one, um, again, here's a sort of good guideline in terms of laying out the content for a weekly session. So I've subdivided week one into three different sections. So we've got lecture notes, stroke slides, additional resources and activities, and further study. So again, in, in terms of lecture notes or slides, maybe you could upload the PowerPoint uh, slides from the session if you had some you can uh, turn those easily into a PDF and upload those or maybe you've actually you know you could have even have recorded the session and then you could actually upload the video there as well in terms of additional resources again uh, Moodle has a variety of ways of, of ways of uploading content so again it's another PDF and video here that's that's been introduced but there, there are other features so for example um, you could upload a audio recording maybe or a podcast or you could put a link um, using the the URL tool a link to a, a, a website um, you could actually add some sort of activity maybe it could be a wiki or a blog or a discussion forum for that particular week and then a third section would be further study. So there's maybe maybe another word for this, maybe extension activities. So maybe go push the students who want to go push beyond or delve into that topic in a little bit more detail. Um, you could provide some again, some maybe some additional reading or some extra links or extra resources um, that take the student maybe even beyond the content of that particular week, um, if so required. Okay, so that's that's kind of a nice uh, format for the sort of a weekly format. And what I've done is I've actually kept the the weekly format pretty much the same. So um, that's week one. If you went to week two, you would see the same thing. So the same heading, lecture notes, additional resources, further study, and so on. Um, and that's pretty much the same all the weeks down, so weeks one to weeks nine. Um, if you would notice in week 10, there's not actually any activities there. So um, it's really recommended that if you do have an empty folder, an empty, sorry, an empty section like this, that you really ought to delete it. I mean, students will go into it and probably be expecting some uh, something in there. So that's easy enough to delete. If you haven't done that before, if you go to the top of the page, turn editing on. And then if you scroll down to the particular section, and it's I think it was uh, week week 10. And as you can see, there's nothing in that section. So if I click on the edit button next to that section and then go delete topic, I'm going to get rid of that sec section. Um, and if I turn the editing off again, you can see that particular section has disappeared now. So it's not a good idea to have an empty section. One other area, though, at the bottom, and you can see this is slightly greyed out, is that we've got a 70 section here. And this is, um, I've called it external examiner's content. This section is deliberately hidden. So in here, you can actually hide a particular section and only the external examiners could go in there. So if you wanted to highlight anything for your externals, maybe it was, it was a really good piece of students' work or um, some specific details that you wanted only the external examiners to see, you can go down and hide that section. Again, hiding the section is, is very easy. So turn editing on. 
scroll down to the section that you particularly want, click on the edit button, um, and you can see this topic is, is, is hidden. So you've got the eye with a the eye icon with a little line crossed out to show the topic, and then likewise to hide it again, just click on the icons there. Okay, so that's more or less it in terms of um, a layout that meets the Dell baseline. One other area that's um, really important, though, um, is the, if you look at the blocks, and these are the blocks on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see um, by default these these will be showing up. So, um, and I just want to highlight one of these, and that's the reading list. Again, it's essential that all the modules on all the courses really have a reading list that students can go into. Um, because this is my test area, um, this is not set up, but the library, and there will be a library contact person who you can speak to for your particular school, they will set up the link and they will set up the reading list and that's automatically will feed into that block there. So if that's not working for your particular module or you don't know how to update that, you need to contact your library liaison person and they can show you how to do that. Um, okay, that's it in terms of the basic layout for a particular module. Um, let me take you to um, one useful link which will show you where you need to go in terms of few, uh, further help. So if you go to the top left hand of the screen, click on module help. This gives you three bits of information where you can get further help. So if you want guides, click on here. So again, if I click here, this will take you to the module help sheets. If you click on here, there's a guide for all the features that I've talked about in this webinar. And if you scroll right down to the bottom, there's the more detailed document somewhere. Here we go. The Dell baseline requirements for all Moodle modules. So it's a written document basically going through um, all the features that I've just talked about in the last 15, 20 minutes or so. OK, um, let me stop there. So. That's it in terms of today's webinar. Um, I'll just return to my slides. Um, just bear with me for a couple of seconds while I load my last couple of slides. Um, OK, so I've talked about further help. There are future webinars coming up on a variety of different topics. So there's not one next week, but the next the next one will start the week after. Um, and the future topics will be approaches to providing electronic feedback. Um, so that webinar will concentrate on, um, on, on using rubrics uh, in your feedback. Uh, what's new in Moodle? So that will talk about the new features that um, we've added over the summer. The third one, setting up and managing group assignments in Moodle. Um, and that will be followed by anonymous marking in Moodle. And then finally, getting Moodle ready for next semester. So those are the future topics coming up. Um, my contact details are here, and I'll leave those up for a couple of minutes. Um, and I will stop.